Welcome to another exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Coy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. Now, a few weeks ago, probably a little over a month ago now when you're viewing this, uh, Mr. Magazine ran away and didn't want to be on a show. And we had the uh, we, we had a, some guests on the show. And one of the guests, Stuart, from uh, Franklin Hill Ventures, uh, good guy, and I've talked to him a number of times uh, as well. Well, he said something over on their videos uh, as the Finder Flippers uh, resale podcast. Do check it out if you haven't already. Um, they were talking over on their show about how to get into reselling. If you're going to resell on eBay, what should you do? And you know what should you sell? And I'm going to tell you what he said, and I want your opinion, Mr. Magazine. Okay. He said... Resell what you know. So if you collect records, resell records. If you collect sports cards, resell sports cards, and so on. What are your thoughts on that? I would say that's a good start out. So you need the foundation, something you have some knowledge in, so you're going to get some instant success. So if you know sports cards and someone has a $50 card marked out in 20 you think you could make some money, well, you, you have some knowledge there, you can make some money doing that. But you know, as you grow and you see other things, you know, like both of you take some chances, you, you learn some more along the way, and then... You know, a year, five, ten years on the road, instead of just cards or comics or records, you're doing 10, 20 different items, you know, types of niches and stuff. So, Well, and, and I will admit that you started off in what you knew because it was what you had around the store. Sure. And I started off selling what I knew, which was I was selling off doubles of my collection because um, I didn't have anything else to do with them. So I was listing them over our, uh, on your site back in the day and, you know, selling them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was what I was selling as well because... What am I going to do with doubles of 1976-77 basketball? Exactly. Absolutely nothing. So I put them in a lot and I'd sell them out. Um, are there any problems that you see, Mr. Magazine, with selling what you what you know slash collect? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think I've had problems with the stuff. I mean, that I specialize in at least. I mean, I'm a collector, so I guess some, I eat up some of the profit by collecting some of it. Exactly. It's certainly an issue. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And that's the problem is, and, and we've mentioned before that there was a collection last year that we went in partners with somebody else. Uh, three of us went in partners, and, and we've given some of the numbers before. We, we each put up $25,000, so $75,000 total. Uh, we ended up splitting up some comics, and the rest of the things went to Heritage. And after everything, we ended up making about $31,000 each or something like that. We made $6,000 each. We yeah, got $31,000 right. back. Yeah, it, wasn't a hu it wasn't a huge money maker for what we fronted. you know. But, but no, but we made it, six it grand against some comics. It was easy money, though. Yeah. Yep. On one hand, I'm very thankful for the deal. $6,000 is $6,000. Uh, very, very happy with that. On the other hand, I kind of wish I had found that deal myself. Now, if I had $75,000 sitting around, it's a whole other story. Let's leave that out of the equation. But I'm glad that we did it and sold it the way that we did. Mm -hmm. Because if I had bought that collection, I probably would have gotten about $400 back on it. And I'd be sitting on a lot of yeah, really, right. really good stuff in my collection. And that, I think, is the biggest problem with selling what you collect is you end up keeping a lot of the stuff. Or say that I didn't have $75,000 sitting around, mm -hmm. or I had to pay it back. Right. I ended up picking up that collection, and I flip it uh, you know, through Heritage, through this, through that, but I'm able to keep one good comic out of it. Yeah, I was going to say the best way for you to do that, if you paid up the 75 yourself, sell 75 worth, and then you'd keep $18,000 in comics, whether it be one $18,000 comic, two nines or whatever, but that would be your gravy. You know, so you didn't make or lose money, but you got built two, my collection yeah, up. Two yeah. nice, two nice pieces, and that would be tough. Yeah, that would be tough because it had some good, good comics yeah. in it that I definitely would have wanted to have kept for myself. Sure. Um, and, and again, that's the problem. You know, they say uh, don't sell what you use, um, <laughs> or don't use what you sell, uh, and, and that's what you end up doing if you're a collector. Because again, the deal comes along, and you want to keep everything out of it because you're a collector, and you're right. saying, "Oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. Oh, I want that, I want that, I want that." Now, I can sell comics mm -hmm. if they're funny animal comics. Yeah. I can sell comics if they're new comics because I don't care about new comics whatsoever. Right. You know, you come to me and you say, "Paper Goy, I've got a collection of comics from 1984 to present." To me, that's just product to be sold. Yeah. I mean, I might keep a couple Sergeant Rocks out of there or something, but sure. who cares? I don't care about it one way or the other. You get me a pile of comics from the 50s through the 70s, 
I'm going to want to keep a lot of comics out of yeah, it. Sure, you know, exactly. And, and, and that gets real, real expensive. Well, that's my problem. I collect Batman, Spider-Man, and Star Wars, three of the biggest names in the industry. So anything that comes in that's good or, you know, that I like, I'm keeping all of it. You know, crazy. So, yes, it is a good starting point. But the downside of that is if you are truly a collector of it, you're not going to want to sell anything. And it's hard to run your business not wanting to sell anything. Right. Um, that's one reason why I'm a lot into the ephemera. I can appreciate the ephemera. But if I find a 1911 um, hall pass to some uh, Ohio school and somebody wants to give me $12 for it, I'd much rather have the $12 because I have no affinity for that particular hall right. pass. I don't care about it. As far as to keep for myself, I can yeah. understand why somebody wants it. Oh, that's really neat. I went to that high school. It's from yeah. my town. Whatever. I understand the reasons why somebody would want it, why they would collect it. It's just not something or other that I put any value in as far as to keep for myself. Yeah. Sure. Um, same thing with books, things like that. Oh, wow, that's a $250 book. I just put it up for $5. I'm selling it because I don't generally yeah. collect books. There might be a book or two that I keep because I like them. Right. But generally speaking, I don't collect books. Those I'll move out. They're just product to me. But you give me that two hundred fifty dollar comic book, I picked up for five dollars. Probably not getting sold, right? And that could be a problem. Uh, I'm. But at least you're only on five dollars. You got a hell of a deal. Whereas if you had to pay two hundred for it, or one twenty five, so you paid half. Now you're sitting on one hundred twenty five, which is a lot harder to you know swallow. If you have ten or twenty deals like that, now it's a thousand dollars you're sitting on. So it does add up over time. Yeah, it certainly does. It certainly does. And of course, my. Argument as a collector is, well, it's not going down in value, which is true. It's not, but it's really not a good way to run a business, and that's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Are you a business or a collector? Are you running this as a hobby or running it as a business? And that's one main reason why I got out of basically selling sports cards and basically not selling older comics per se that I would care about just because, again, I would end up keeping far too many of them right. to make sure. any money off of it. Yeah. So, yes, uh Stuart was absolutely right. That is a good entry point. But if you truly are a collector, I think you have to move on from that because otherwise you'll run into that same trap that, that I would run into uh, with that as well, where you'd want to keep everything and not make any money at all. Yeah. Imagine our numbers if we didn't keep it and all that. There are many times when I... There are a couple of people I know that are not collectors, and I would say that on one hand I'm very envious of them. Yeah. Because everything to them is just a commodity and they can make money off of it and they have no problem, they have no attachment to anything and they can move it. Though I feel the older I get, the less I care. Meaning like if I'm 50 now, you know, and my care level's at a 9, next year it's going to be an 8, and by the time I get to 60, I'm going to care less and less. So what am I going to do is I'm getting closer to, you know, retirement or death or whatever, you know, and I got this huge apartment above the shop loaded with all the stuff that, no one cares about it. No one appreciates it. You know, you can't show it off. So at some point, I'll have to, you know, bite the bull and say, what am I doing? Let's start selling the cheapest stuff that I don't care about, you know, at some point. Yes and no. And, and you're right. And that's kind of what my plan was, too. Problem is, we keep buying other stuff that we actually plan to sell right. for the business. That's another, yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. you know, I'd have to hire, like, you know, a 16th employee just to sell my stuff off if they know how to sell it, you know. Yeah, yeah, because again, yes, I'm going to sell my collection off, and I've said this all the time. I will sell my collection off. It, my collection will be the 75,000 and first unlisted thing <laughs> that I'll start to do there after I get the other 75,000 listed. May take a while. They're good death piles to have those. That's true. Do it the uh, like button if you could, and we will see you next video. Take care. Bye bye.